I am at the Roswell Museum and Art Center in Roswell, New Mexico. One of the best features of the museum is outside. This is the Dr. Robert Goddard Monument. Goddard was a pioneer of rocket science. He created and launched various forms of rockets, including liquid-fueled rockets in the 1920s and 30s. This statue is here in Roswell because Dr. Goddard actually lived here during the 1930s and the beginning of the 1940s. This statue is technically called Visions from Space, and it features a full-size statue of Dr. Goddard in what appears to be a doorway with a telescope and a control panel for his rocket. Across from him is a full-size rocket launching setup like the ones he would create outside of town for his rocket experiments. That is actually one of Goddard's tested rockets with its original launch tower incorporated into the monument. That is pretty cool. Here he is pressing a button to either launch the rocket or blow it up, which would happen sometimes. Now Roswell, New Mexico is most famous for its supposed 1947 UFO incident, and the city has a lot of alien-based attractions and fun museums, that is the real reason I came here. But here at the proper Roswell Museum, they're not concerned with any of that. Though that certainly doesn't mean it's boring. Turns out there's a lot of other interesting history in this region, and this museum has some cool artifacts and some uniquely curated exhibits. This is Biff the Beaver, a taxidermy beaver who appears to be the museum's mascot. Here are some western bronze sculptures by Rogers Aston made during the 1970s. Many of the artifacts in this museum are displayed in these giant cases based on wire themes. So this is the Native American display. They have a lot of relics packed in here without much explanation. It's kind of like an old cabinet of curiosity. I do really enjoy these setups and they're getting a lot more rare, but it can be hard to focus on one thing when there's so much packed together. There are some neat headdresses, saddles, ceremonial drums, and other accessories with great beadwork done by local New Mexico based tribes. There's an 1880s Lakota pipe, along with a Mescalero Apache tray basket, and a Hopi vase. Here are some Christian and Jewish religious items from the past including antique sheet music for There Is No Secret What God Can Do, written by Stuart Hamblin, who I am actually related to. There's a couple of folk carving crucifixes and a Madonna and Child. Here's a display about farming and ranching around Roswell. Take a look at this display of cowboy ranching gear and saddles. That is one of the most western displays I have ever seen. There's a taxidermy longhorn steer head, alongside the head of a coyote, I think. There's some revolvers, spurs, stirrups, and little bronze saddles. There's some moccasins, and even a miniature horse-drawn hearse. This section is all about trade and exchange, the various forms and means of trade that has occurred in this region over the centuries, whether it be localized Native American trade long ago, to wider intercontinental trade during the Wild West days, This appears to be a Wells Fargo chest, probably used to store money or some valuable mineral, 
given the lock mechanism. There's a taxidermy grizzly bear head. These are some seemingly out of place pieces for Roswell, New Mexico, including some unique foreign weaponry. There's also some full European armor sets in chainmail armor, which is similar to what the conquistadors may have worn in this region. There's another set of armor, along with a spear, and that probably counts as a halberd. There's also some guns. That's a grave marker that states that a U.S. soldier from the 7th Cavalry fell here on June 25th, 1876. That would be the Battle of Little Bighorn, so I wonder if this used to be a marking on the battlefield. There is also an authentic unknown Indian grave marker. There are some great military relics from the Indian Wars era. There's some U.S. Cavalry uniforms. They do have a very impressive collection here. I'm surprised. There's an antique UMC ammunition display. There's some more old guns, swords, and European armor. Seriously, there's a lot of guns and swords. This is pretty cool. A tree grew around and enveloped that 1800s rifle barrel. Here's some various types of revolvers. There are some daggers. Here are some more Aston bronzes. Rogers Aston created bronzes of western frontier scenes, similar to those made by Frederick Remington and others. Much of what we saw in the museum was from the artist's own collection, so he would base things he sculpted on his actual artifacts. Back to Roswell's original space connection, there is an elaborate display on former resident Dr. Robert Goddard and the important rocket experiments he performed in the dry mild climate of Roswell, New Mexico. Here is a liquid fuel rocket made by Goddard back in 1928. He built his first in 1925, filled it with gasoline and liquefied oxygen. He launched his first successful liquid fuel rocket back in 1926 while living in Auburn, Massachusetts. He continued testing there until 1929. Here are some fragments from his historic first rocket flight test which is pretty cool. These were the first rocket-borne weather instruments. I guess they were placed on the rockets. There's an old crate with a rocket payload on top. Here is another one of his tested liquid fuel rockets from the late 20s. Many of his rockets obviously didn't survive testing. Here is some rocket debris from a 1929 crash. This is a chamber used for testing gunpowder as a rocket propellant. I don't think that worked too well. Goddard became quite famous for his experiments, and Charles Lindbergh, who had also rapidly rose to fame during that time, got involved with Goddard and arranged funding for him to move to Roswell, which was a better climate and offered much more privacy for this kind of experimentation. So here is a whole collection of rockets and rocket parts he worked with, during his time in Roswell between 1930 and 1942. He did 56 test flights during that time. That is Dr. Goddard's stopwatch, used during the rocket tests while here. That was his makeshift rocket control panel, which is portrayed on the statue outside. This rocket was unsuccessful in a 1932 test flight. The best rocket he made while here, launched about a mile and a half up in the sky. Overall, Goddard ended up with 214 patents, and something of interest they mention here is that he was considering the possibility of magnetic levitation, or maglev trains. He thought a maglev train trip between New York City and Boston could take about 10 minutes. This idea has been somewhat realized in Japan and Germany. 
That is a turbine Goddard used in a 1945 rocket blast. He continued his work during World War II for the war effort. During that time, he worked on some rockets to boost Navy planes during takeoff, which led to the Bell X-2 rocket motor that broke the sound barrier later on. These are some rocket propulsion devices from the 40s. Perhaps the best feature of this museum is a full historical recreation of Dr. Goddard's Roswell Laboratory and Workshop. He lived at a ranch on the outskirts of the city, which had an outbuilding he turned into this rocket laboratory. I know the ranch house at least still exists, but I don't have time to seek it out today. Apparently Charles Lindbergh and his financier Harry Guggenheim both visited Goddard and the lab here in Roswell. This replication does have many authentic artifacts from the real lab, but I'm not sure the extent to which all this is original. Still, it is very impressive. This rocket was built by Dr. Goddard and his crew in 1938. It flew to an altitude of nearly 2,300 feet and dropped back down with a parachute. While his research continued, that was his last successful test flight. This is what his workshop looked like, where he pioneered the way for rocket science, which was particularly beneficial for the NASA missions that occurred in the ensuing decades. While working here in Roswell, he did launch the first liquid-fueled rocket to exceed the speed of sound. This lab recreation is fantastic and alone worth a visit to this museum. It turns out that Dr. Goddard is not the only space-related connection to this museum, even while they ignore the UFO crash in extraterrestrials, as they have an exhibit on Apollo astronaut Harrison Schmidt, who was born and grew up in southern New Mexico. Schmidt was a professional geologist and got involved with NASA when he got selected to be the first member of the scientist astronaut group to fly in space as part of the Apollo 17 moon mission. The geologist by trade became the first and so far only civilian to set foot on the moon. This was Harrison Schmidt's in-flight spacesuit and stowage bag from the Apollo 17 mission. He wore this during the space flight to the moon. The stowage bag stored his lunar suit helmet to walk on the moon. And this was his bio harness, worn on his waist inside the spacesuit to track his medical vitals during the mission. Apollo 17 was the last Apollo mission, and was the last time human beings have been on the moon. Schmidt is the second to last person to have been on the moon. He later became senator from New Mexico. And here they have a moon rock. Schmidt was brought along because of his expertise on the geology of the moon, so it is appropriate that they have this little rock brought back from the moon. Now we're moving on to the art-centered exhibits of this museum. There are several galleries dedicated to local and New Mexico based artwork. This is a sculpture by Luis Jimenez. He made some really colorful and energetic sculptures of Native Americans on horseback. This is a small version, but he made a few massive ones that are very impressive. This original 1930s gallery of the museum features the work of artistic couple Peter Hurd and Henriette Wyeth. Hurd did grow up in Wild West Roswell, but moved east and ended up with an apprenticeship with the famous artist and illustrator N.C. Wyeth, and Hurd ended up marrying his daughter Henriette. Later on, Hurd wanted to get back to New Mexico, so they moved to a ranch about 50 miles from Roswell, and that's where they created all of these beautiful paintings. Peter Hurd was apparently nuts for windmills. He made many illustrations of them. Here is another Peter Hurd work, titled The Gate and Beyond. This is a display of WPA era furniture made by a local WPA worker during the late 1930s for use in this museum. This was the original reception area of the museum, and they have completely recreated what the room looked like back during the 30s and 40s with the actual furnishings which are now considered to be relics of the past. 
This gallery features the works of contemporary indigenous American artists. Many of these pieces have important historic symbolism that has been present in this region for centuries, sometimes thousands of years, and they often contain some deeper meanings. This is a special exhibition of Masha Shaw works. It states that with these pieces, the artist is engaging in a visual relationship with language that is in a state of improvisation. Hmm. This is a painting of Sicily from the 1960s by Donald B. Anderson. That's a really great one. This one is titled Open Spaces. And finally, this is the Made in New Mexico exhibit, featuring the artwork of a very diverse group of artists who have all called the Land of Enchantment home and have been inspired by its unique natural beauty and culture. That was the Roswell Museum and Arts Center. This is a really great museum with some interesting exhibits, especially the Goddard Collection and Recreate Workshop. This place definitely gets overshadowed by the UFO Museum and the alien mystique the city is so well known for, but it is definitely worth making time for this museum as well. If you enjoyed this video, then please like it, share it, and subscribe to the channel. I have videos featuring many other history and art museums, roadside attractions, national parks, and much more all across the country, including several other videos featuring the wondrous city of Roswell, New Mexico. I have videos on the town itself, the International UFO Museum, Alien Zone, and the UFO Spacewalk. Those are all linked in the description, so take a look if you're interested. Anyways, thanks for watching.